In this video, I want to introduce you to what's referred to as either a Gantt chart or a cascade diagram. So Gantt spelt G-A-N-N-T. Okay. So here is an activity network. It's quite a basic one. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw the Gantt chart that goes from this. Now, the first thing that you need to do is identify the critical activities. Okay. Now, because we've got 0, 0 and 4, 4, there's only one route out. That means that A is definitely critical. Uh, 4, 4, 9, 9, 4 plus 5 is 9, so C is also critical. B is not critical because the 7, 12, and that means D is not critical either. Uh, G is not critical because 9 plus 3 is not 16. E is critical. 9 plus 3 is 12. And so F has to be critical. And H is also critical. So we've got a critical path. A, C, E, F, H. Okay, that's what we use to start off with. So what does a Gantt chart or cascade diagram look like? Now, obviously, you would have to draw this. Actually, I won't draw that bit. You would have to draw this by um, on graph paper. Um, the grid would already be given to you. Okay. Um, so what does it look like? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have an axis down the bottom, and that's going to represent time. Okay, so here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, oh, 16. Almost got there. Okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Right, so we've got time along the horizontal axis. Each of your activities is going to be represented by a rectangle. Okay, so activity A lasts four hours. So it starts at zero, it goes on till four. So it's going to look like that. Here is A. Okay, so you want it above your time axis. Okay, so you want a gap. And that's where activity A goes. Now, all of the critical activities go in one single row at the bottom, like I've got here. So I've got A starting, then I've got C, which goes between 4 and 9. There's C. Then I've got E for another three hours. Obviously, you'll be able to draw this with ruler, and then F for another two hours, and then H for another two hours. Okay, so you all want them the same width. I mean, mine's not very accurately drawn at all. Okay, but the whole point is that you're getting the idea of how this is done. Okay, so your critical path goes in a row all together at the bottom. If you have multiple critical paths, okay, so if, for example, you didn't just have A, C, E, F, H, you also had, let's say, uh, a, uh, I'm just going to make one up, I'm not going to, don't look at the graph, um, imagine you've got A, D, um, G, H, for example. Now, you're not going to draw A and H again, that just means that D and G would take up this slot here. So let's say something like that. OK, so it's representing that D and G are critical because they are together. Um, but you won't redraw A and H. OK, that's how you can represent two critical paths on the same Gantt chart. OK, right. So then what we need to do is we need to draw in all of our other activities. Now, the other activities um, need to be drawn in with their float as well. So B can start at 4. 
That's the earliest time that B can start, and it lasts three hours. So you want to leave yourself another gap, and you want three hours, so it goes till seven. And it should be the same size, so same height as the previous row, and that's B. But the thing is with B, B can go all the way up to 12. Okay, that's the latest time that B could finish. So, how do we represent this on, how do we represent that on this? So, what we do is we draw a dashed box that essentially B can float within. Okay, so you can kind of move B right and left inside that box. Okay, so that's B done. Now, D uh, can start at 7. That's the earliest time it can start, and it can go up to 14. And it lasts two hours. So we go to 7, and we need to go on to a new bit here, so a new line. So leave a gap. So for each other activity that's not critical, you need to go on to a new part, a new line. So two hours. There's D, and it can go up to 14. And then you've got G, which can start at 9. So 9, and it's 3 hours. And it can go up to 16. Like that. Okay? And so that is your Gantt chart. Um, so what it does is all of your critical paths at the bottom, and then all the other non-critical activities, uh, one on top of the other, preferably in the order that they appear, but not necessarily. Um, the convention is that you draw them at their very earliest start time. Okay, so you don't draw D over here, uh, but you push them all to the left-hand side. That's the convention. Um, you could draw it in a different way, but uh, quite often the question will identify that it should, they should start from their uh, earliest event time.